Hi, I'm David Soper, and today I'll be going through an overview of the ServiceNow ServiceGraph connector for Cisco Intersight. Intersight ServiceGraph connector is now available in the ServiceNow store, and there you'll find additional information in the installation guide on configuration and use of the integration. After you've installed the application in ServiceNow, first thing you'll go through is guided setup, and that will include Intersight API key configuration. I'll start off in an Intersight account. And it's recommended that you use a read-only role for this in your Intersight account. So I see that read-only role here. And from there, I'll go into the system settings menus and API keys, then generate API key. Give this any name, I'll select ServiceNow. I get a version two key. And then I get an API key ID, which I can copy to the clipboard and a secret key. Here, I'll save that secret key to a file and I'll use those in just a minute in ServiceNow. Back in ServiceNow, I'll go to the All menu in the upper left and search for Service Graph. And I see my Cisco Intersight connector there. First item is Setup. When I click that, I'll be taken into Guided Setup. And here I'm going to review previous config and walk through that. When I click that, I'll start off on entering an API key ID. So in this menu, I'll leave all the other defaults, but for that value, I will paste in the key ID that I picked up from Intersight and then click Update. Next step is to enter my secret key. And I'll pick a name that I need to remember for the next step. Put Intersight TME Dev here. And I paste in the contents of that secret key from the file that I'd saved earlier and click Submit. Then I go on to configure the Intersight connection, and as noted, please add API credentials added in the previous step. So I just need the name of that credential. And here uh, you can do a user-defined name again for this connection. I'll reuse Intersight TME Dev, and then that's also what I'll use for my credential. So I need to pick up that credential I saved earlier for SAS Intersight. The rest of these defaults can be left as is. If you're using a virtual appliance, you want to change that host field and use a mid server. I'll click submit at that point. I had a previous connection, so I'm changing that and that's okay at this point. Final step in API configuration is to test the connection. And from this menu, I'll leave all the defaults and I'll click the link to test load 20 records. So I'm looking for a successful update of 20 records from the Intersight API. This can run for a little while as it configures the connection and tests things, but after a minute or two, you should then see success with 20 records loaded. Our final step in guided setup is to activate scheduled imports. So if I go back to the main guided setup menu, I can go in and configure my scheduled import. And I can leave all these as default. One thing to notice is that I want to see a data source with my service graph connector for Cisco Intersight. If you don't see that, there's instructions in the installation guide on how to fix that issue. Hopefully you'll see that, leave that as is. And then I'll want to click active to make this import active. After I do that, I see that this, will, this is set to run periodically. Defaults every 15 minutes. Um, we recommend leaving all of these settings at their defaults after you click active. And I can click update to go and get that scheduled job running. I'll finish out taking a look at ServiceNow's inventory and what's pulled into the tables within ServiceNow. So I go back into my service graph search. Um, I'll see servers, blades, Rack units, Hyperflux clusters, Fabric Interconnects, chassis, and virtual machines that can all be pulled in. And if I select servers, I'll go to the table view of servers. Several attributes present there. And if I needed, I could drill down and see relationships between those. And I'll finish out with a look at those configuration item relationships. So I'll go back and just search for virtual machines. And I'll go to the full virtual machines table in service now and I've got different discovery sources so service now and the service graph connector for Cisco Intersight are present and I can go search for specific VMs and I'll look for some of my internal TME VMs 
one of them I see there is my NTP server. If I go look at that, see attributes for that. And then I can also click the dependency view. And in this dependency map, I'll see a relationship from Hyperflux cluster to server to virtual machine. And if I look at the cluster, I can expand that and I can get a full view of the cluster and the relationships to its servers and the VMs. This is really helpful in change management or other processes within ServiceNow. See what might be impacted for something like a firmware update and what VMs and other nodes in the clusters might be impacted. Thank you, and for more information, be sure and visit intersight.com help.